I've never published an unboxing video, but today I have a box. I'm creating a video and uh, this is coming out very close to Christmas. So what better timing could there be for unboxing a box? Now this is actually the first hardware unit that was sent to me and before anybody gets too excited, this is a demo unit, so I actually have to send that back. And I'm also not completely sure what's in there. The company sells two versions of the same thing and they didn't really tell me which one they sent me, so I'm curious to find out. And I haven't looked into the box yet, so I am finding out as I'm filming this video, so this is going to be interesting. I would also like to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the ethics that I'm trying to follow. I have not yet written a full ethics statement, I'm planning on doing that. I probably need to do that now that I'm getting hardware stuff and uh, things that actually cost money. If you're making videos on YouTube, you will eventually get free stuff and that usually starts out with software licenses simply because software licenses are very easy to give out by companies. There are no marginal costs associated with software licenses or usually there aren't. And that essentially means that uh, the worst case that could happen is that the reviewer would otherwise purchase the software themselves. So in the very, very worst case, the break-even is one sale from being featured in a video. So this is something that companies very easily do. I got software licenses from a couple of different companies, from Fiedler Audio, from Audio Brewers, from Red Rock Sound. They usually send me the licenses. I got some stuff from PSP Audioware and some stuff from Eventide. And uh, that is very much appreciated and uh, kind of uh, that's something that really helps me in making videos and finding new ideas for videos. However, I need to point out that I never, 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 never uh, accept any software that is uh, tied to certain requirements. So if a company asks me to do certain things uh, in exchange for a software, I'm not going to do that. Everything that I'm going to say in my videos is always going to be my own opinion. There is no reason for me to accept any sponsorship that is tied to kind of uh, selling out my opinion because quite frankly, I have a very well paying day job and I don't need that type of sponsorship. Now there's a lot of talk about uh, YouTubers constantly shilling products and only talking about them in ways that are very good and never kind of pointing out the things that are wrong with products. And uh, that is to some extent true. And quite frankly, that is simply because it's much easier to create a video that is a positive review than one that is a negative review. If you want to talk uh, about things that don't work in a, in a software or hardware piece, you really need to kind of dig into the details and make sure that you're not talking about things that are kind of that that you missed you know kind of it, it, it's very easy to miss things so a negative review is more significantly more complicated to do and that's also quite frankly the reason why or one of the main reasons why many of the videos that i do about things that i get from companies are usually positive first of all i only like to talk about things that i actually like um, and that means if i don't like something you are not going to see that because i don't like talking about it I actually got a couple of things that I never really talked about. And uh, the other thing obviously is that um, because of all the things that I do, I usually don't really have the time to dig into all the details in, in order to make sure that if something doesn't really work the way it's supposed to work, that I give you all the details necessary in order to kind of make that a, a really good review. So review channels are really difficult to do. So if you are interested in, uh, in things from a review perspective, you really need to look for actual review channels that make that their main purpose and that essentially kind of um, try to be as uh, diligent as possible. Um, that's not necessarily something that a regular YouTuber who does this on the side can do. So be aware of that, that all the things that I, I, I do are usually not really reviews in a traditional sense. They're more like uh, first impressions. I'm kind of looking at something and I give you my impression. And if I like something, I make a video about it. If I don't like something, I usually don't. But, uh, you know, kind of sometimes I might actually also kind of point certain things out that uh, I didn't like. But anyway, um, that that's what it is. So I wouldn't necessarily talk about these things in terms of being a shill or kind of always only talking about good things. It's just the nature of the thing. Um, a, a good review is much easier to do and much more fun to do and therefore it's much more likely to be on my channel. And with that being said, let's open the box now. Uh, you might not know, but one of the things that I actually like to do is to cook. So I'm going to open that with a paring knife, uh, something that every cook should probably do. And the other thing that I probably should point out is that this is not really set up, or kind of my cameras are not really set up for unboxing. <laughs> so I'm probably going to bump into a couple of things and I'm going to have a hard time kind of showing all the things that are in there. But, you know, kind of, I'll give it a try and let's see what's in there. So let's just open that up here. 
And then uh, let's see what's in the box. Uh, oops. Okay. Some paper. Okay. What do we have here? Uh, Voyage Audio. And what this really is, is a spatial microphone. Uh, Voyage Audio makes a couple of really interesting microphones. They are Ambisonics microphones and they are different to many other uh, microphones. Let me just see what we have here because I'm honestly not sure which one it is. They make two versions. One is a Dante version and one is a USB version. Let's see what they sent me. And uh, the thing, and, and you can see sort of what you have here. So, so this is the microphone and uh, you have all kinds of cables and from the cable I already see it's a USB version which is which is good it makes my life a lot easier to be perfectly honest it would be interesting to kind of look at the Dante version though but uh, you know kind of uh, I'm fine I'm fine with the USB version and this is the microphone um, it looks actually like a regular microphone so let me just kind of take it away and let me take it out of the box and you know kind of this is a demo unit so i'm not quite sure if you get any value out of the things that are in there um i think this was open before this is probably an open box thing but it, it comes with a quick starter guide and uh you know kind of i think that's a sticker or something and uh some uh registration card and uh, then here we have the the microphone oops uh, here we are um it looks like a regular microphone which is actually quite interesting uh, okay, so it, it has an other uh, connection. I need, I need to check. I think it's the USB version, but I'm not completely sure. Yeah, it's, it's probably the USB version. It doesn't have a network connection. And uh, let's see, can I take the thing off? Probably not. Uh, so essentially, um, this is surprisingly light and has, a, has kind of compact. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to see. So let me, let me see if I can actually take that off. Can I take that off? I don't want to destroy the first thing that people sent to me. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. But essentially, I'm going probably going to kind of pull up a, an image so that you can see what it is. But uh, what this microphone really is, it is an Ambisonics microphone and it has eight um, capsules in there. And that essentially means that this is actually capable of producing second order Ambisonics. Now, um, it's not really, it can't be really full second order ambisonics because second order ambisonics has nine channels. And uh, if you are familiar with ambisonics, you know that you need as many capsules as you have channels. So in order to get full second order, you would have to have nine capsules at least. But, you know, kind of eight is actually a good number. So you're getting very, very close. Uh, it's certainly more than most of the traditional microphones have. And to show you a comparison with the first order microphone, I here have the uh, famous uh, Zoom H3 VR, which is a first order microphone. And as you can see, it has four capsules. So, so that, that essentially kind of is enough for first order. First order has four channels. And it's actually a really good one. And it's not particularly expensive. So this is a kind of a good entry one. Uh, people have different opinions about it, but I think for the price, uh, it's actually a good option, especially since this is a standalone unit, so you can simply record on that and that, and that just works. It, it works perfectly fine. But this is second order, and that's going to be interesting to see. Um, so there is a, a knob here, so we will, I will see and try to find out how that works. Uh, but that is actually quite fascinating. Now, one of the reasons why I got so excited about reviewing this particular microphone is that uh, a lot of people constantly point out that since I'm a channel that primarily talks about 3D audio and spatial audio, wouldn't it be nice if I actually record in spatial audio? So instead of using a regular microphone like the Luit that I have here, wouldn't it be interesting to record everything in binaural? And um, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually curious to find out if this would be a solution to do that. It certainly has the kind of visuals of a regular microphone, and I could uh, probably kind of put it here somewhere. And uh, I'm curious to see how that actually works, or if it works, and what I have to do in order to make it work. Because this is apparently uh, in a in a kind of kind of weird spot, so I probably would have to reorient the uh, sound field and everything, and then probably kind of make things or kind of re change the the nature of the 3D audio in, in general, otherwise you have the feeling that I'm really in front of you. Uh, but I'm really curious to find out if I can actually use that as a regular podcast microphone. 
uh, because that would actually be really cool. That would allow me to do all my videos in Binaro, something that once again, a lot of people constantly ask me to do. Now I'm not going to do any of my testing until mid January and I'm recording this at the beginning of December. And that essentially means that if you have any questions or comments or if there's anything that you want me to try out, let me know in the comment section below and I can definitely do that once uh, the winter break is over. And you can also join us on our free Discord server. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. There are a lot of really interesting people there that can help you with all kinds of things related to spatial audio, 3D audio, game audio, all things immersive, really. And if you're interested in this particular microphone, uh, watch out for a video coming out probably at the end of January, maybe a little bit later. I'm going to try out a couple of things um, and uh, let's see how good it really is. And uh, with that being said, see you at the next video.